Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're the Parises. I'm John Paris. I'm Kristen. And this morning is Tuesday, June the 2nd. And we are so happy to be leading you all in morning prayer this morning. So let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 78, verses 41 through 73. We'll read them responsively by half verse. Many times they provoked him in the wilderness. And grieved him in the desert. They turned back and tested God. And provoked the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his power. Nor the day when he delivered them from the hand of the enemy. How he had wrought his miracles in Egypt. And his wonders in the field of Zoan. He turned their waters into blood. So that they might not drink of the rivers. He sent flies among them, which devoured them up. And frogs to destroy them. He gave their fruit to the grasshopper and their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones and their sycamore trees with the frost. He smote their cattle also with hailstones and their flocks with hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the furiousness of his wrath, anger, displeasure, and trouble. Sending these destroying angels among them, he made a way for his indignation and did not spare their soul from death but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Israel. The first fruits of their strength in the dwellings of Ham. But as for his own people, he led them forth like sheep and carried them in the wilderness like a flock. He brought them out of safety, out, of, out safely, and they were not afraid. He overwhelmed their enemies with the sea and brought them within the borders of his holy land to his mountain which he obtained with his right hand. He cast out the nations before them and caused their land to be divided among them for an inheritance and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. But they tested and displeased the most high God and did not keep his testimonies. 
but turned their backs and fell away like their forefathers. Twisting aside like a broken bow. For they grieved him with their hill altars. And provoked him to displeasure with their images. When God heard this, he was full of wrath. And utterly rejected Israel. So that he forsook the tabernacle in Shiloh. Even the tent that he had pitched among them. He delivered the ark into captivity. And his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over to the sword. And was angry with his inheritance. Fire consumed their young men. And their maidens had no marriage songs. Their priests were slain with the sword. And their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awakened as one out of sleep. And like a warrior recovered from wine. He drove his enemies backward. And put them to a perpetual shame. He rejected the tabernacle of Joseph. And did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. But chose the tribe of Judah. Even the hill of Zion, which he loved. And there he built his sanctuary, like the heights of heaven. Like the earth, which he had established forever. He chose David, his servant. And took him away from the sheepfolds. And as he was following the ewes that were great with young, God took him. That he might feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he fed them with a true and faithful heart. And guided them with skillful hands. Glory be, be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel, beginning with the seventh chapter, the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me, and you, O son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, an end. The end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end is upon you, and I will send my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will punish you for your ways, while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, disaster after disaster, behold, it comes. An end has come, the end has come. It has awakened against you. Behold, it comes. Your doom has come to you, O inhabitant of the land. The time has come, the day is near, a day of tumult and not joyful shouting on the mountains. Now I will soon pour out my wrath upon you and spend my anger against you and judge you according to your ways. And I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways, while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that I am the Lord who strikes. Behold the day, behold it comes. Your doom has come, the rod has blossomed, pride has budded. Violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth. Neither shall there be preeminence among them. The time has come, the day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. For the seller shall not return to what he has sold while they live. For the vision concerns all their multitude. It shall not turn back, and because of his iniquity, none can maintain his life. They have blown the great trump they have blown the trumpet and made everything ready, but none goes to battle, for my wrath is upon all their multitude. The sword is without, pestilence and famine are within. He who is in the field dies by the sword, and he who is in the, si the city famine and pestilence devour. And if any survives, survivors escape, they will be on the mountains, like doves of the valley, all of them moaning, each one over his iniquity. All hands are feeble and all knees turn to water. They put on sackcloth and horror covers them. Shame is on all faces and baldness on all their heads. They cast their silver into the street and their gold is like an unclean thing. Their silver and gold are not able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with, with it. For it, is, it was the stumbling block of their iniquity his beautiful ornament they used for pride, 
and they made their abominable images and their detestable things of it. Therefore, I make it an unclean thing to them, and I will give it into the hands of foreigners for prey, and to the wicked of the earth for spoil, and they shall profane it. I will turn my face from them, and they shall profane my treasured place. Robbers shall enter and profane it. Forge a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. I will bring the worst of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the pride of the strong, and their holy places shall be profaned. When ang anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster upon disaster, rumor follows rumor. They seek a vision from the prophet while the law perishes from the priest and the council of the elders. The king mourns, the prince is wrapped in despair, and the hands of the people of the land are paralyzed by fear. According to their way, I will do to them, and according to their judgment, I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us respond with the canticle of the Benedictus Est Domine. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory, Glory to you. you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The second lesson, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the eighth, eighth chapter, the 26th verse. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading of the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join his chariot. So Philip ran to him, and he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And as the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this, this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road, and they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he came through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So I wanted to share a little bit about our second lesson, Acts. Um, I'm a huge fan of the book of Acts, as, as John knows very well. Um, so um, I wanted to um, sort of talk about Philip's journey um, and, and, and a little bit starting with the, the first half of chapter eight um, in the, the section directly before this one, we see, um, we see uh, Stephen dies at the hand of stoners and um, Saul begins his rampage on the church and the church scatters. Um, 
And then the story picks up and zeroes in on Philip. And it says that Philip first goes to Samaria. Um, and I, I'd like to believe my imagination, believe, you know, leads me to believe that, you know, Philip being one of the 12 who was with Jesus, when he heard Jesus say, you will be my messengers to Samaria and to the ends of the earth, that, you know, maybe Samaria was on his mind. Um, so we have that check. Um, and, and he, he shares the gospel in Samaria and it spreads and there's some drama with this guy named Simon and you should read that. Um, but, but then the story continues with Philip and it says the spirit or an angel of the Lord says to him to take this road further south. Um, and so he's doing that and on the way he sees this Ethiopian eunuch or this court official. And, and, and I wanted to mention um, the, the earlier passage and in, in the, the commission that Philip received from Jesus because um, at that time, Ethiopia was kind of like the most farthest south. It was, it was basically the, the edge of the known world. Like there was no other world that, you know, people knew of below <laughs> Ethiopia at the time. So, um, so I think there's this, this interesting connection we see, check, check, Samaria, check, ends of the world check in this one chapter um, with Philip. And, and I, again, my imagination leads me to believe that, you know, hopefully he was making that connection. I'm certainly making that connection. I think Luke is leading us to make those connections. Um, and, um, and, and what he does and how Philip um, enables the gospel to, to go to the edges of the earth is not by going there himself, is, uh, is through, um, through this, this, this eunuch who he shares the gospel with. And um, because Luke says that he went to um, Jerusalem to worship, um, that is supposed to clue in the readers that he is of some um, Jewish descent and that um, maybe he might be a proselyte or might be um, part of the Jewish diaspora at the time. We don't really know, but that's as best as we can, we can conjure. Maybe other scholars can check me on that. Um, and, and what's really interesting is that, um, and I really want to hope, hone in on this idea of a guide in that the eunuch specifically asks, who will guide me? Um, and um, the, the purpose of a guide, one of the, the definitions of a guide is somebody who shows points of interest to and to explain their meaning of for significance. And I think we know, we can maybe recall times in our own life when we have been guided by people well and guided by people not well. And I think one of the things that separates a good guide from not is someone who does not only understand the, the explanation or the significance of what we're experiencing, but who can listen to our curiosity um, and marry our curiosity, our inklings, our imagination desires with the significance and the meaning that we are in at the same time. And, um, you know, so good guides listen well to their followers. Um, and I think that's really what Philip is doing is that um, he's obviously hearing this, this court official um, reading likely aloud Isaiah, um, and, and here's this, this spark of curiosity about who is, who is this about? Is this about Isaiah or is this about somebody else in this passage? Um, and he's not only listening to, um, to, to the eunuch, to the court official at this time, he's also listening very intently to the spirit as the, the verses said before, um, and so the beginning of this passage in the middle that Philip is, is hearing from the spirit. So Philip is taking in all of this listening um, and, and bringing this together um, to create um, this conversion experience for, for this eunuch. You know, it's, it's, all, it's all connected in there. Um, and I think what makes, you know, Philip so special because he's not one of the big characters of Acts. Um, you know, he's, but he is, he was with Jesus and he had the Holy Spirit. And that is true of us today because of, 
um, the Ascension and, and Pentecost. Um, so I, I read Philip's story and I see, um, see myself and, and something that if I'm listening and I'm paying attention well, not only to what's around me, to the people around me, but also to the spirit, that there's no reason that I couldn't lead somebody in this way. I couldn't be that guy. Um, and I think that's, this is the, the idea of this is kind of like a model of evangelism that we see laid out here um, in Acts. I um, remember a book I read in college called Reimagining Evangelism, um, where really the, the whole book lays out this idea that evangelists are really guides, are really people who are paying attention, who are actively listening and able to lead people into personal experiences with God just based on, um, yeah, their ability to, to, to guide the people they're with. And sometimes we guide people who we're with for, uh, who we, ex we live a lot of life alongside, and sometimes we're guides to people that we're not uh, living life with for long periods of time. Like Philip just came up on this guy. Um, and, and he knew like, wow, this is, this guy is literally from the end of the earth. This is, these are the people that Jesus need be, um, is, has commissioned me to talk to and to share his gospel with. Um, and, and I, I wanted to also to highlight this idea of listening and listening to the spirit and, and say that connects with what we're doing here with morning prayer, because, spiritual disciplines like morning prayer, like the daily offices, like le reading the lectionary, are part of how we build those muscles and in tune our spiritual antenna to the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit is never going to speak outside of scripture, outside of the character of God laid out in the scripture. So the more that we can internalize the scripture, the more we can know the, um, the story of God as it's laid out through things like the offices and, and the lectionary, um, the more our hearts can conform to the heart of the spirit and we can listen um, and we can, we can build a familiarity. So, you know, if we are blessed with the experience of somebody, you know, reading scripture and there's no reason to believe that that couldn't happen today, um, that, that we would be able to, to bring a familiarity with the scripture, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, and speak into someone's life in, in a new way. Um, so I just want to conclude by saying, you know, maybe, um, I don't know if you, if you watch these morning prayers, and maybe you, you haven't considered your purpose for why you're watching morning prayer, or maybe you, you've said, like, I, you know, I'm participating in, in morning prayer because of, of, of the benefit for, for myself and and for the Lord, and while that's all, all good and fine, um, I'd like to invite you to consider these times as opportunities to, to build our muscles and uh, help attune our senses more closely with the Spirit, so that when you find yourself in that guide bowl to another person, you are able to see it for what it is and guide that person to be one step closer to Jesus and be that that good guide who really brings our curiosity, brings what excites us about life along with the gospel and, and into um, a, a, a beautiful experience of, of the spirit and the gospel. And um, I pray that, that this is, um, we see ourselves anew like this today. And I pray that we have more um, Philip-like experiences in the weeks and months to come. So um, let us continue with prayer with the Dignus S. Splendor, Splendor and, and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God for every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and ever. Amen.
And now let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of, of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, the protector of all those who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings at this time. Lord, we, we ask at this time that you would um, help us all to be more like Philip, Lord. Help us all to be people who um, are in tune with the way your spirit is moving, Lord, and who um, are willing to answer when you call, Lord, that we would be people that know your voice, Lord, that um, heed it and that follow it, Lord, wherever you may lead us. We pray for the unrest, um, the racial unrest in our country right now, in our cities. We pray for the family of George, George Floyd and for the African-American community in this country. God, we know that you are a God of justice. We know you're actively working to seek justice in this situation and all situations. So I pray that um, where you, where there needs to be action that you would act and that 
um, you would give us the, the grace and the patience to see where you are in this moment, to see your, your justice and not um, a nation's justice or my justice, but we would truly see your justice. Let us conclude with the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.